Every two minutes in this country, someone is sexually assaulted. That means by the time I finish my remarks today, at least one additional man, woman, or child will have been brutally attacked. By the end of this year, more than 200,000 people, nearly all of them women and girls, will have been victimized in this most inhuman way. Only 60% of the victims will ever report their attack, and barely 3% of attackers will ever serve a day in prison. These statistics are staggering, and we are not doing all we can to ensure that every victim has access to the justice she deserves. This failure starts when victims are first treated in hospital emergency rooms. The lack of concern, the failure to be treated in a timely manner, and the absence of basic information often makes women who have been sexually assaulted or raped feel victimized all over again. We then fail to use evidence collected in a rape kit to find and punish those who commit sexual assaults and rapes. Rape kits are too often misplaced or ignored, with thousands simply collecting dust in some jurisdictions. Even when a rape kit is sent to a lab to be tested, there can be long delays before its DNA evidence is examined, analyzed, and compared to other DNA profiles. Every untested kit is a lost opportunity to provide justice to victims and to catch dangerous criminals before they victimize additional people. To see the importance of rape kit testing, you need look no further than New York City. More than a decade ago, the city implemented a law mandating testing of every rape kit within 30 to 60 days. Since that law took effect, the arrest rate for rape has skyrocketed from 40% to 70%. Compare that to the national rate of 24%. Clearly, the more rape kits we test, the more rapists we get off the streets. Imagine what would happen if we tested all of the 400,000 rape kits on the shelf around the country. For many years, I have fought to end the rape kit backlog. Back in 2002, I introduced the Rape Kit DNA Analysis Backlog Elimination Act, which would have authorized $250 million to help police departments finance rape kit testing. In 2004, I worked closely with my friend Mr. Sensenbrenner and with others to enact the Justice for All Act that created the Debbie Smith DNA Backlog Grant Program, which authorized hundreds of millions of dollars for DNA testing and strengthened the ability of state and local law enforcement to test rape kits. In the 10 years since the creation of the grant program, we have seen some progress, but the backlog continues to be a major problem and progress is uneven across the country. We must act today to, re to reauthorize this important program. I urge my colleagues to support this bill and work toward the day when no rape kit goes untested and every victim of sexual assault sees justice.